Stay tuned to learn about the softwood lumber market, prices, supply and demand balance, and current situation at the middle of May 2023. Hello again, everyone. Kata Kosman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter, here in the middle of May to give another update of what is going on with softwood lumber, the market, prices, and supply and demand. At the moment, we have not seen the usual seasonal increase in lumber prices that would be happening right now historically for the time of year. It's been a very, very slow beginning to not just the construction season, but uh, building of inventory and the usual buying of lumber. That happens, as I say in my other videos, during February and into now, you know, and usually even starting to slow down by June, even prices starting to flatten out or drop by June. And we haven't even had what would normally be seen as the spring buy yet. So prices are not doing very much. Um, the recent downtime and curtailments taken by quite a few different lumber manufacturing facilities and sawmills has worked to prevent the price from falling really further than it is now. The volumes that have been taken offline are enough to offset this very soft demand that we're having at this time of year, uh, somewhat unusually. And so um, when you see the graphs in just a moment, uh, prices have been flat for mm, almost two months now. So really big tragedy unfolding as we speak in Alberta. Um, this year went from never-ending winter, snow, ice, cold, seemingly endless to fires, like in one second, instantly. Absolutely never happened before. Really troubling about what is this going to mean when we really do have the longer dry season with the heat that happens, you know, July, August. Uh, if we're already in this now, what is that gonna mean later on in the summer? It's actually terrifying. Does not bode well for the Northwest, for the West Coast. Last year, and I think the year before, were pretty bad for fires. Um, we all heard about California, but Washington State and Oregon, uh, actual timber, actual merchantable timber, burning up and now we have Alberta. So it's not just uh, the towns and villages that are being evacuated. Canfor, the former Miller Western uh, sawmill in Fo Fox Creek is closed and has been uh, evacuated. So when there are announcements about fire and we hear you know, um, road closures, rail line uh, closures, and towns and villages being evacuated. We don't necessarily hear that much about manufacturing facilities, but we already know right now that at least that one mill is completely offline and it doesn't look good. There's going to be uh, heat and dry weather coming for the next few days there in Alberta. So the army has been mobilized to help the fire, the wild firefighters, uh, building fire breaks, providing support, helping to evacuate people, keep people off the roads, all of this in the middle of May. So for the moment, this has not had an effect on the lumber prices. What could affect lumber prices and is definitely happening is the end of the previous futures ticker that had always been historically until May 15th closing of that uh, current contract was the only one left and that uh, previous lumber futures ticker is now retired and the new ticker is going so far the volumes uh, of trade have been um, significantly lower than uh, previously, but it's early days. So there's some changes going on in um, the mechanism 
of uh, lumber purchasing. I'm reporting on cash or print, the actual price that wood is sold for, FOB mill, so mill gate, uh, whereas futures is, as people know, a hedge uh, where uh, very seldom does a uh, buyer take delivery and it's uh, usually traded on the forward month and a half or three month contract as, um, you know, betting against whether the lumber price cash or print is actually going to go up or down. So let's look at some graphs and I'll explain where we are right now. I'm not really going to be able to give any insight into how this is going to affect the next weeks and month because there's too many things that have never happened before that we don't know what's going to happen. We've had the past two years with the COVID lockdowns and then recovering from that and the adjustments of society, things that had never happened before. Now we have completely different things that never happened before. It may or may not affect the market. It may be short. We don't know. So this is the reason why folks who must have a good fingertip on what's happening with the forestry and the lumber, subscribe to my dashboard. And I'll get into that a little bit later, but there's some links here in the caption. You can go to my website, look around, read about. I have a post about the lumber futures, that what the change means, the mix of species has changed, the size of the volume of a contract trade has changed and the delivery location has changed from the Prince George Inland Container Terminal, terminal to uh, Great Lakes, so more central. Uh, and as I said, those new uh, lumber futures started one year ago, so there's no history previous to that. And the uh, uh, historical lumber futures that had been going on ends and there is no future. So. If people want to see what was going on 10 years ago, what happened with lumber futures, what happened with cash, you know, the prices that I tell you, there's one less place to go to look at that right now. And so in the week ending May 12th, 2023, the price of benchmark softwood lumber item, Western Spruce Pine Fir 2x4, number two and better, was again US $360 per thousand board feet, which is flat from the previous week and is up by $9 or 2% from one month ago when it was 351. So as you can see, quite a bit of a flat line there in comparison to the last two years. However, the last two years were very unusual and price movement that hadn't been seen before and is, I mean, all things being equal, which they're not, isn't expected to be seen again. And compared to the same week last year, when it was $1,110 per thousand board feet, the price of WSPF 2x4 was down by $750 or 68%. And compared to two years ago, when it was $1,550, that week's price is down by $1,190 or 77%. And I laugh because it's just strange to look at how the price is up or down by an amount greater than what the price actually was ever seen before. So it's obvious that the market is moderating back to what we would consider normal, but how this is going to be for the next couple of years, we still don't know. So as you can see, you know, everyone's talking about things like the fires, the uh, changing futures, um, se seemingly lack of demand. When is the building season going to be coming on um, for this year? Is there going to be a building season or is it, are we just going to float through the summer and now wait until next year, which al almost all the realtors and uh, analyst people agree next year, 2024, will be a good uh, year for building and the housing market. Um, so what we know right now, this week in the middle of May, is that the order files at the sawmill are out past the end of May. So two weeks or more. And that's good. You know, it means that the sawmills are booked for manufacturing into that far ahead. It's important to understand that while these 
curtailment announcements and um, slowdowns are being made, that is taking the maximum volume of production lower. Okay, so if a mill goes from three shifts per day, five, five days a week, to one shift a day, four or five days a week, and then it has an order file out to the end of May, that's still less wood than if it was just running normally, okay? And this is what I mean about how when the mills take downtime, it brings enough of the manufacturing offline to keep the price, at least to keep the price from falling further, if not to like keep it level, right? And so I did a little video just the other day about a new product that we have here at Madison's, the Sawmill Curtailment Lookout, which lists every month for that month. So the one that's going to come out at the end of May will be for May. And it specifies how many facilities are taking downtime or slowing down and how much volume of wood that's going to be reduct, reduced from the normal annual supply. So watch out for that. That's another thing that helps uh, an on-time uh, source of information to let people know what's going on on the ground at the moment, not in hindsight, not three months later, but now telling you about now. So let's look at a little bit more uh, graph and table and uh, have a bit of a understanding of this situation that we're in. And uh, again, I'm not really going to be able to um, say what I think is going to happen next, but I will make another video in a couple of weeks for the end of May explaining what's, gonna, what's happening at that time. Great. And then here is the uh, table comparing current to historical one month ago, that top line WSPF, uh, the graph that I was showing previously. Take special note now that the lumber futures has changed uh, to only the new contract, the new ticker, uh, the top line there, WSPF as it was before, the second line, ESPF, and then the fifth line, Douglas fir. These are the species in the mix of the new lumber futures. And so these prices are taken into account and have an impact. Looking very flat, over um, week over week. The Southern Pine, that's very interesting to me that those prices are falling more than um, the other items which look like they're mostly flat. It's possible that um, Southern Pine East Side prices rose a little bit too high there in the past couple of weeks and month, more than the market could bear and are now moderating back down to be in line with the others. Uh, again, as you can see further over to the right, a month ago, again, those uh, southern pine prices are managing downward. And then here are those same six items presented as a graph, as you can see far over to the left in two years ago. Super high, completely unknown situation, big correction down. Those uh, prices uh, in August of 2021 look almost lower than now. Then another big run up in uh, February and March of last year. That was a large, uh, large part due to the flooding and destruction of highway and rail line here in British Columbia um, at the end of 2021, more than um, the spike in demand that we saw in uh, 2021 and 2020. So since about midsummer last year till now, you can see, except for the plywood, which is on a trend of its own, the dimension lumber prices are sort of flattening out and moderating to a level that seems, you know, understandable. And as time goes by over this year, for sure, we're going to see how that trend continues. Okay, great. And so there you go for now. Um, information, but in some ways leaving things open to find out as time goes by. Uh, hopefully the uh, situation in Alberta will get resolved sooner rather than later. Hopefully this won't last all summer as some of the uh, Forest Service folks there in Alberta have been saying might be. And hopefully there won't be other fires in other important timber supply areas like British Columbia, Washington State, Oregon. 
and elsewhere. If you like what you see here, click like so this video will get recommended to other viewers. Click subscribe here on YouTube so you'll be notified when I make another update. And if you need more than just these small snapshots that I do infrequently, go on my website. The link is here in the caption, madisonsreport.com. At the top, you can go through the menu, click to get a sample, and we will send you the full list of the 500 individual softwood lumber and panel commodities that we track and the price for that week. And we will send you the commentary, that, which goes to subscribers, explaining why those prices have changed and what is going on in the market. All these things I talk about here, timber supply, order files, you know, if there's a labor issue, transportation, all of that kind of stuff goes into my dashboard for my customers every Friday and they can see on Friday what's happening with the market at that time. I'll be back making more videos. This week is the um, Sustainable Forest Initiative, the SFI, the forest certification folks are having a conference here in Vancouver. The entire world, it seems like it's coming. Uh, quite a few people that I know, but some people that I haven't met yet. And so I'm going to be there uh, for this week. In a couple of weeks is the International Pulp Week here in Vancouver again. And a couple of weeks after that is the First Nations Forestry Council meeting, not downtown, but um, on the University of British Columbia. And I'm expecting to also be there. And so between all of these, when I'm talking to everybody, I'll be getting as much scoop as I can about the forest, the timber, the mills, the customer, the housing, construction, demand, data, everybody's different insights and input. And I'll be bringing that to you. Of course, it'll go to my customers, but as much as I can, um, put parts of it on the website and in my YouTube.